Kevin Pierre-Lewis joining us right now at Texans Radio. Mark Vandermeer, John Harris with you. Kevin, how's it going so far in Houston for you? So it's been a blessing, honestly, being here. Um, got a, a good group of guys that are down here right now. A lot of competition at a, at a lot of position. Um, being a northern boy, I definitely got a welcome to this humidity that's been here. And all I keep hearing is that it's only going to get worse. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm glad to be down here, you know, get my foot into the door a little bit and uh, just ready to compete like any other year. Kevin, I'll, that's an interesting way that you talk about Houston being a northerner. So I'll just ask you straight out. First of all, August is going to be like uh, in anything, nothing you've ever seen. But don't be scared by it. You'll be okay. For sure. Why Houston? Why Houston? Uh, just competition, just the, the chance to compete. Um, you know, I'm blessed enough to head into year eight. So given the opportunity to compete, compete for a spot, um, you know, they, they're trying to piece together something great here. And I would love to be a part of it. Um, there's not too many times where you can say, you know, you were a part of something that started as, that was great. So just trying to take advantage of this opportunity that's here. And uh, we're doing that. You've been in the league for a while, Kevin. Let's just take the last couple of years before this one. Late in the season with the Bears, you have a couple of really big games. And then you sign with Washington. You had a nice season with them. What was that whole process like ending up with the Bears and then Washington and now here? Uh, it's, it's definitely helped me a bit. You know, uh, like I said, I've been a couple of squads and, you know, having to learn different techniques and everything's kind of starting to piece together. And it's allowed me to transition a lot easier than, you know, someone that probably hit free agency for the first time and going through the steps and the motions. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's just, you know, there's a lot going on, a lot to navigate during these times. Last year was definitely interesting with no off season. Um, now, you know, given within the, the protocols, of course, uh, we have an opportunity to, you know, build a trust with certain guys and see each other earlier than it was last year when it was just training camp, which once training camp hit, it was kind of like the ball was rolling right there. And then there was no uh, transition, really. So um, it's, it's been good. When we sign players, Kevin, a lot of times I think back to how they were in college. I do a lot of studying of college and the draft. And I wore number 24 in college. So anybody that wears number 24 always stands out. And I'm watching you, and I'm like, man, he's tackling everything. Everybody that moves, that dude is going to make a tackle. How has your game developed from the time you were at Boston College to where you are now? Um, I'll say it developed with just the trust. Um, and this is no offense to you know, my time at Boston College, but in college, a lot of times, we feel as though we have to make every play. Yeah. Um, there was plenty of guys that can make a ton of plays that I played with at BC. You know, obviously, you know, we had Luke Keekley here, Mark Herzlick, Nick Clancy, just naming a couple of linebackers, Matt Milano. Um, but now it's really just about doing your job. And sometimes actually that can be the hardest thing because sometimes you just think, oh, I got to make the play. But you realize if you're doing your job, then everything else is going to piece together. Once you don't do your job, then you might be leaving someone else out to dry. So that's definitely a transition from college to the NFL. And it's easier said than done for sure. Well, you played your high school ball in Stanford, Connecticut, right? And ended sure. up at BC. So why BC? Just take us through that. And there were some big names you were with on campus at Chestnut Hill. Yes. Uh, just think about life after football. Um, you know, I grew up. Uh, my father played football for a couple weeks. Um, besides that, I'm, I think I'm the first person to play football. I think we all soccer players, you know, coming from Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, so I singled my decisions down in Stanford and Boston College. Once again, just thinking about life after football. And, you know, ended up with Boston College. And honestly, it was probably the best decision I could have made. Uh, staying somewhat close to home, but at the same time, far enough to, away. Um, I'm personally not a Jesuit, but that Jesuit community definitely helped me grow as, a, as an individual and as a man. And uh, it was, yeah, the best of experiences that I had those four years. Kevin, this defense, Lovey Smith taking over. He's been a defensive coordinator for a number of years in NFL. How do you fit this defense and how do your skills make for the right fit for this defense? You know, we're still all figuring that out where everybody's going to fit. Um, as of right now, I'm just focusing on having make sure I have the confidence in myself, realizing, you know, we all have to realize we're here for a reason, uh, especially when, you know, there's a new staff that comes in. 
for the most part, they try to handpick their guys. So obviously I've shown something that they say, hey, his attributes can fit into this scheme, into this defense. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. So blessing we have the OTAs to kind of work out the kinks. Um, and we're going we're gonna to see going forward from there. Well, you mentioned Haiti. So tell us what involvement your family still has with Haiti, with the homeland, if you will. Yeah, so um, my direct family, some of my aunts, uh, a lot of them travel back and forth from Haiti. Uh, they're into real estate. So they got hit pretty hard with everything that went down there. A lot of houses went down, just like a lot of people. But fortunately, we're on the blessed side in Haiti. So it's just about just rebuilding um, helping out there, doing, you know, toy drives, food drives. Uh, my aunt Evelyn Pierre Lewis is actually very big on that. Um, sometimes, you know, do dentistry, uh, clinics down there, just doing all that we can to help. Um, every little bit matters. And, you know, we're such a prideful country, you know, gaining our independence, but we, we need a lot of help. And so just every little bit kind of helps right there. So we're just doing what we can. Kevin, I know you haven't been in Houston very long, but have you had a chance yet to kind of get ingratiated to the Haitian community that's here? Is that something that obviously means a lot to you? Do you want to be able to do that here in Houston as well? For sure. You know, um, would like to when the time is right. Uh, unfortunately, just, you know, it's, it's about bar. And like I said, there's yeah, no a, doubt. Lot of, a lot of competition right now. So you know, I have to realize the best way to for me to help is to help myself first. Make right. sure that I am here when it comes August, September, and going forward. And once I can solidify a foundation, that's when I'll be able to uh, reach out. You know, like they say, you can't pour from an empty cup. So right now, my focus is just filling that cup so I can uh, give to others. And Whitney Merciless has uh, some experience on the subject as well. So I know mm -hmm. you're going to get together with him at some point Definitely. if you haven't already, I would imagine. Yeah, no, that's uh, what I've heard. So tell us about what it's like to be with these guys, Kevin, because look, this is a, a team with a lot of players that have just joined dozens of players literally have just joined the Houston Texans organization. And I know not everybody makes the 53, but what's this group like for you? What is the camaraderie like so far? I know it hasn't been that long. You've been doing a lot of zoom meetings and this week you're, you're kicking it off, so to speak in OTAs, but what is the experience like for you being around these people? It's a great experience. I, you know, uh, I felt like a broken record. I keep bringing up the word competition. And I think slowly you, you see each day, each guy starting to kind of buy into, you know, hey, there's going to be a lot of competition. You know, you can't get comfortable here. Um, and it's been good. Uh, you know, everybody's just trying to find their niche with everything going on, with the new offense, new defense. Um, and it's a blessing that there's a good amount of us right now taking advantage of this time together because, um, you know, like I said, we have to work out the kinks and figure out everything. Kevin, we didn't get a chance to talk to a lot of players last year, be it here or other places. What was a football season like going through a mm -hmm. pandemic? Can you at all try and make sense of what 2020 was all about for you as a player and for other players in the NFL? For sure. Uh, 2020 was definitely interesting. Um, it, it gave a lot of us a time to sit down and, and look in front of a mirror as we had so much more time on our hands, you know, to realize, you know, what choices, good choices we've made, bad choices that we've made. And then specifically when it comes to, uh, to football, you know, it's like, okay, can you be a true professional? 2020 challenged a lot of us is like, can you really have all this time to yourself and figure out ways where, you know, some of us were getting kicked off fields. I was trying to find fields to uh, do certain drills on, uh, finding different places to work out. It really challenged you to, um, you know, face a little bit of adversity. And then on the flip side of that, it was truly a blessing that all of us had to realize that we had an opportunity to still work, to provide for our families, which a lot of people did not have those same opportunities. So, you know, the times that we might feel as though we're down or complaining about running in the heat, this, that, and the third, those are the times you had to sit back and think, you know, count your blessings because things could be the other way. There couldn't have been a football season. So we were all appreciative things were figured out. Um, obviously you had to, like anyone, you know, jump over a couple hoops, but the fact that we were able to complete a whole season um, was, was a blessing. What was it like being in Washington with all that Alex Smith stuff going on? 
And uh, A. Smith is a good guy. I mean, I was with him uh, in Kansas City in 2017, I believe. Um, and it, it was, the man's a soldier. Uh, I've seen the documentaries, uh, you know, the leg, all the surgeries, but really seeing him work after all that and seeing his injury um, without anything being covered, you really gained a new level of respect for him. Um, obviously, you know, things were going on with the team where things were being figured out, but it was... I think it was real a good moment to still have him a part of that that staff and and the things that he was able to do to help us help them now at least. Mm -hmm. All right, Kevin. So you don't have a game at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. It's cheat meal night. <laughs> it's cheat meal night, and you can have what you want in front of you. What's the cheat meal at your discretion? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. Uh, I'm one of those oddballs to where. I'm blessed. I can eat whatever I want to eat. Honestly, you know, there's certain guys on the team. Like, I don't get how you <laughs> eat like that. Yeah. So for me, low key, like, you know, any, any night's going to be a cheat night. I'm big on, you know, uh, double cheeseburger with bacon fries. Uh, I mean, I go down the list, man. You know, I probably say the only thing I truly, um, pay attention to is like quality of meat. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, you know, I'm a guy that, I'm a smaller but faster linebacker, so I'm always eating something. Um, so this weekend, I think the wife says she's going to uh, might do flank steak, uh, <laughs> something, eat a lot of that, you know. There you put go. That, put that in the sous vide, sear it a little bit on the grill. After that, it's all good. All right, I, I got two more, and they're similar about other sports. If you grew up in Norwalk, Connecticut, are you like a Yankee fan, New York sports teams fan, Giants, yeah. that kind of thing? Or – something else and then at yeah. boston college do you ever go to any hockey games when you were there or basketball or anything else so i grew up uh the first sport i, I love was basketball um so i was a lakers fan ended up being a lakers fan because i was ended up being the first team that i ever watched play uh basketball on tv but besides that um i'm a red sox fan and the only reason i'm a red sox fan i grew up in yankees territory growing up all i heard is yankees this yankees that and so the year that I decided to watch baseball, I said, you know what? I'm going to pick the team that's least likely to win the World Series because <laughs> I can't, can't say, like, I'm just jumping on a bandwagon <laughs> ended up being uh, the Red Sox. I'm like, perfect. I could talk trash to my friends. And that ended up being the year we won the World Series. But it was when we were down <laughs> three games, whew, that was rough. <laughs> that, that was rough. But uh, been, been a Red Sox ever, ever since. And then um, I wouldn't say I'm a, a Bruins fan, but I cheer for them just from being in Boston. Um, but, but besides that, uh, don't have any other teams. But no, definitely uh, no Yankees. No right, well, Kevin, thanks so much for spending some time with us. And we really look forward to seeing you on the football field coming up soon. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.